Welcome back everybody to another episode of Life on the Road, Road Life. So today, I'm gonna do some cooking. Uh, it's windy, cloudy, looks like it could rain, so I'm gonna try to knock this out before it's done. I've been trying to wait for the perfect weather, but uh, if I keep waiting for that, I ain't ever gonna get anything done. Plus, I've been hungry and I want to eat some uh, shrimp sauce pecan, or sorry, some uh, shrimp etouffee. So that's what I'm making today, some shrimp etouffee. We're gonna do some cooking. So as you see, I got my mess of, of stuff here behind me. Stove, Instapot, all that stuff. So I'm gonna go over everything and uh, set everything up for you. And I'll show you what the ingredients are. And then we'll get into the process of making some uh, shrimp etouffee. So my version of it anyway. There's a lot of different versions, but I'm gonna do my version. So bear with me. Like I said, if it's a little windy and the wind's bothering you on the audio, I'm sorry, I apologize. But uh, we're gonna try to knock this out and get this done. We'll talk to you in a bit. All right, welcome back everybody. So here's my ingredients. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, had a cough. All right, so here's my ingredients. I got some, some butter right here, some unsalted butter. I'm gonna use some flour to make roux. I got some celery, green onion, regular onion, bell pepper, rice, some chicken stock, salt and pepper, some red pepper flake, add a little heat to it. And then I got some parsley flakes and then some Tony Satchies. So we're gonna use those to make that. And then of course I got some shrimp and I'm gonna peel that up and get that ready to go here in a minute. But uh, that's our list of ingredients. Um, I don't have the exact amount, so I just kind of use what I think is what I need. And we'll go from there. So I'm gonna get ready to start processing this stuff, getting it cut up and get it ready to go because I want it ready whenever I start my roof. And then I'm gonna use the, uh, the tails and uh, shells and stuff off the shrimp. And I'm gonna mix that in with the chicken stock and boil it for a little bit and kind of make a uh, uh, somewhat kind of like a shrimp stock. So we'll try that and uh, I'll be back with you shortly. All right, so I got my shrimp right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning it. You know, I've already cut it and deveined it. So as you can see, it's already deveined. So all I gotta do is just take my peels off, pop the tail off. I'm gonna put it in this pan right there. So that way I can add my chicken stock to it and make me a nice little shrimp, uh, little stock out of it. So I'm gonna do these right here. It's really simple. Like I said, yeah, you just gotta take the shell off, peel it down, squeeze the tail, off it comes, put that in a pan. Do the same thing with the rest of them. Just keep going through them. Throw that in there. You know, some of them peel a little easier than others. But once you get them peeled, like I said, it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna sit here and do that. So basically while I'm doing this, I'm gonna tell you, you know, uh, sauce piquant. Well, piquant, basically what that translates down to is gravy. So it's kind of like a gravy, you know, Cajun gravy type of thing. Uh, it's really easy to make, very delicious. You know, and you can use pretty much any kind of stuff you want to put in it. You can do shrimp. A lot of people, and probably what people are most common with, is crawfish etouffee. Uh, but you can do chicken uh, sausage etouffee, or chicken and sausage etouffee. You can do uh, wild game, like rabbit, squirrel, uh, alligator. You know, just whatever you want to put in it. You know, it's it's your dish and you're cooking it you're going to eat it fix whatever you want i'm sure people put beef in it if they want to you know just do whatever you want you know it ain't got to be a certain way every time you know it's your kitchen it's your dish it's your recipe you're cooking you're feeding your family then you fix it how you want to fix it don't worry about what everybody else says you know make sure that you're happy but that's what it's all about is making sure that you're happy so i'm going to continue to do this for a little bit and uh, it's gonna take a little bit because I got quite a bit of shrimp. I gotta watch and be careful not to throw my shells in with the shrimp I've already cleaned, but you know, it happens sometimes. So if I do it, I'll just pick it out of there and, and uh, head on for the next one. So I will uh, check back with y'all in a bit. Welcome back. All right, as you can see, my shrimp here is all peeled up and ready to go. So what I wanna do 
is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it in a Ziploc bag. All right. So I gotta sit in a Ziploc bag. Like I said, it's windy. Stuff's wanting to blow around. So I'm gonna take my my seasoning here, my Tony Satries here, and I'm gonna sprinkle some of that inside of it. You season it how you like it. I'm gonna put, I don't know, maybe a couple of teaspoons in there. Close it up in case it gets blowed over. I'm gonna seal, it, seal my bag back up. All right, make sure it's good and sealed. Then just kind of toss it. Okay. Toss it. Get all your shrimp nice and covered. All right. So my shrimp's good and covered, as you can see. So I'm going to let them sit. Meanwhile, I'm going to take my little uh, pan here that I've got my uh, shells in from my shrimp so i'm gonna get this set up so that way the wind don't mess with my flame that much i guess i should have done that beforehand all right i had to turn the stove a little bit because the wind was blowing it around just messing with my flame it still is a little bit so i got it going so now i'm going to take my my shrimp Dang on that wind blowing Take my little pot right there over top of it. Take my chicken stock and pour it right on top of it. Just like it's right here. All right, so now then, I got some chicken stock on it. Now I'm gonna let it start coming up to temperature. I may have to turn this stove some more. I think I'm going to. Go ahead and bear with me. There. Maybe now the wind won't be messing with it so much. Because the wind is blowing from, from this direction. I'll just have to work at a different angle, but I'll be all right. So I got that going. Next, I'm going to start preparing my vegetables while that's boiling. Or coming up to boil and everything like that. So we'll see you in a few. Well, what I was trying to avoid started. It started raining, as you can see it's kind of raining a little bit so i had to put everything on pause for a minute i left my my stock cooking everything else i went ahead and pulled in the truck to keep it from getting wet so we'll give it a few minutes let the stock finish then you know if the stock cools off after it's done that's fine it's no big deal you know it'll get heated back up so we're gonna let it rain for a little bit hopefully it'll stop and then i'm gonna go out and check on that stock and when it gets done, then we'll move from there and I'll probably end up cooking everything inside the truck. So we'll talk to you in a bit. Welcome back. Well, because of the rain and the wind, I had to make a few minor adjustments. So now it looks like I'm gonna be doing all my cooking from inside the truck. So it's gonna take a little bit longer and things are gonna be a little different. So I'll check back with you when I get everything set. See you in a bit. All right, well, Welcome back. We're gonna try this. I've got some green onions here, or scallions as some people call them. And I'm gonna cut them up here and uh, get them ready to be used here in a little while. So all you do, I've already kind of cleaned them up a little bit. So I'm just gonna basically cut them in little, what they call rounds here. Just cut them up. Yeah. They ain't gotta be uniform, just cut them up best you can all right throw that away i don't really have any bowls so guess what i'm gonna be putting them in a cup so i pick them up stick them down in the cup i'm using my pasture seat as my table holding everything and while i get ready to do everything else here So, <clears throat> excuse me, I got my green onions tops there. I'll use them in a little bit. Give me another cup here. Get it set right there. Now I'll grab the bottoms here. And I'm going to set them up here to where I can cut the bottoms, the roots off.
take those. You can actually replant those and they'll grow again. But I ain't planting them, so I'm just gonna throw them away. But if you was to save them, you could actually plant them and, and they'd actually grow. So now I'm gonna cut these right here up. Just watch your fingers when you cut. You don't wanna cut yourself. You know, I'm having to do everything at a different angle, a little awkwardly, so I'm uh, trying to do it the best I can without, you know, really just messing things up and getting hurt. So definitely watch them fingers, because as you get closer to them fingers, it gets a little bit more, more uh, dangerous. So just cut them up, best you can, there we go, I got them all cut up. So now, I'm gonna put them in my other cup. Just like that right there. So, this is more definitely cooking in the truck than what I was before where, you know, I cook outside, but, you know, you gotta cook where you have the best room and outside, you know, I like being outside and enjoying the weather and stuff like that. But today, the weather just did not cooperate. And I really need to make this food before my stuff goes bad. So that's what I'm doing. So now I've got my, all my green onions cut up. Next, I'll do uh, bell pepper or celery. So I'm going to get some things repositioned and ready to go. And I'll check back with you in a minute. Welcome back. So I'm going to start doing this, these uh, pepper, bell pepper, onion, and celery. Uh, it's called a trinity. So different places, they have different trinities. Like uh, in France, they have the mirepoix. Mirepoix is celery, onion, and carrots. In Cajun or Creole cooking, it's called the trinity, and it's bell pepper, onion, and celery. So... <clears throat> the Spanish have their own that they use for like uh, paellas and stuff like that. So, but today we're using it's more of a Cajun thing. We're doing a Cajun dish, so we're going to do the Cajun Trinity: bell pepper, celery, and onion. So I'm going to start that process now, and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting up my bell pepper here. So I have to get all this stuff cut up before it goes bad because I've had it for a little while. Oh, gotta make sure you pull the sticker off. Sticker don't taste good, so we'll make sure you get that pulled off. I've already washed them, but uh, my knife's getting a little dull. So, you know, you just want to cut them up, you know, not too big, but not too small either. So, like I said, my knife is getting dull, but uh, we'll get those. And you can add one, you know, I'm going to use one cup for pretty much all of it, peppers and onions. You know, you want to trim out the inside of it, get the membrane out. Like I said, my knife's getting a little dull here. So, let me see. I might be able to use a smaller knife here to do this. So, it's not exactly sharp either, but it's still better than trying to use a big knife to clean out the inside. Throw that in the trash. Then you can just basically doing what this right here is. If you cut it just like this and leave it, this is a, a julienne. You can use this for like stir fry. Uh, so just cut it in little strips here. Like I said, they ain't got to be perfect. And since I'm cooking right here and doing all this right here, everything's at a weird angle. Because uh, I don't have all the space I normally like to have. So... I'm not going to be as fast and nor is it going to be as uniform so um, just do the best you can cut it up you know I like to make them about quarter inches if I can you know and then stick them in the cup just like that oh there's a piece of membrane you don't want that in there reason people don't use that membrane is because it doesn't really have a whole lot of flavor or it can also turn bitter and so people don't use it I don't use it so 
So now we got, like I said, that knife is getting dull on me. Then my other little knife here is not exactly the, the sharpest either. Set that over there. Then I'll use my little knife here and uh, trim out the membrane. So, all right. And then basically like little Julianne strips here. Well, whatever size you want to do it. So if my videos are a little long, especially this one, I apologize. Um, but like I said, it's raining today and I'm just trying to do everything the best I can inside the truck. I like to do it outside because like I said, it's got more room, but hey, it is what it is. You gotta make do with what you got. Make everything, try to enjoy everything you can. So, there's that, throw that in the cup. same thing the bottom here you can use you can use the bottoms ain't nothing wrong with using the bottoms the top a little different you can use sections of the top but I'm gonna use the bottom all right then we got the celery here all right I'm just gonna stick both of them together cut off his last section right there that ain't no good I'm dirty anyway I had bell pepper still stuck on my knife then I cut the tops off Throw that in the trash. Set one of them off over the side. Then I'll split it. And split it again. And then split it one more time. Like I said, I might have to get me a different knife or sharpen this one because it's getting dull. So then you just dice it up. Like I said, I'm doing it the best I can. So if it's not uniform, don't judge me. I'm working at a weird angle here. And I'm sitting down, trying to do this the best I can. So you just cut it up. You know, you know there are some people that don't like celery. Uh, so if you cut it up smaller, you can cook it longer or cook it and it gets uh, softer to the point that uh, it almost will almost like dissolve inside your uh, your dish and so therefore it'd be better for them so I'm just gonna put the, the celery in the cup too and that cup's getting full here in a minute so yeah see cup's not very big it makes a mess sometimes so you just do the best you can all right so let me do the next one so i'm gonna finish up this celery and i'll check back with you in a few all right all right welcome back i got the celery done so now i'm gonna go ahead and start on this onion all right so what i'm gonna do and yes i got a different knife and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it, split it right down the middle, right there, just like that. I'm going to set one over here. 
then I'm gonna cut the, the end, not the root end, the opposite end, I'm gonna cut that end off. So not a whole lot, just a little bit. Throw that in the trash, I'm gonna leave the root on, and then I'm gonna peel a layer or two off the onion. All right. Just like that. Probably could have left some of it. I'm gonna leave that on there. So then I'm just going to make little cuts all the way through, leaving it intact at the root, okay? So that way, and then you can cut it through here to make it you know, more uniform if you want to. I'm not really worried about uniformity right now. So now just start dicing your onion, okay? So now you cut it. Then you just make your cuts down through here, like so. Try to do that so it doesn't fall everywhere. All right, then you can use your finger to hold on to that root area while you finish cutting. Then you lay it over, cut off that piece, cut that angle off, and you cut that right there. And you can maximize the use of your onion. You can throw that away. And now your onion is basically diced up. So you'll see it's got, it's not, like I said, not uniform, but it's pretty well diced up. So now I'm gonna take that and put that in a cup. Because I don't have any bowls. So I just use cups because I gotta maximize my room on this truck. I don't have the luxury of having everything that you would normally have in a kitchen so i make do and use what i can all right i personally like a lot of onion in my uh etouffee so i'm gonna use the whole thing so i'm actually gonna be using more onion than i am gonna be bell pepper or celery just because i like onion so i cut the top off and again i peel it off Peel a couple layers of it off here. Leave the root. So the root's still intact. So then just make little cuts here on the sides. Like that right there. All the way down. So you can leave the root intact. Turn it. And dice it. Cut it lengthways. There we go. So then take this onion and put it in the cup as well. So now my onion, all my vegetables are cut up. So I will check back with y'all here in a little bit when I get everything else set up and ready for the next process. So we'll talk to you in a bit. All right, welcome back. So because it started raining a while ago, I wasn't able to do my stock all the way. So now I'm gonna have to do everything in this one thing here. So we're gonna kind of work it around here. So first thing I need to do, I wanna go to um, sear. So we're gonna program it here, go all the way down here to the sear, hit start. Now my pot's gonna start heating up. I'm gonna take that stock that I started earlier, my shrimp with all my, my shrimp peelings and my uh, uh, tails and everything and the chicken stock. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it inside here. All right. Get everything in there. So, I mean, it started getting hot, but it never got to go completely and finish. So, that's in there. So, I'm going to let that do its thing. I'm going to put the lid on it. All right. So, now it's going to cook, as you can see, for 30 minutes. I'm going to let my stock go in there for 30 minutes. It's going to boil. It's going to pull all that shrimp flavor and everything and infuse that, that chicken stock with more of a shrimp flavor. So, we're going to have more of a shrimp stock. So, it's going to be 
you know, added flavor. That way it's not just using plain water. So I'm going to let that cook for a little bit. When that gets done, I'll check back with you in a little bit. Welcome back, everyone. Well, my stock is pretty much done. I'm going to give it a quick stir here. And then I'm going to let it sit for a few more minutes. And then we'll strain it and get ready for the next process. So I'll be back with you in a few minutes. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to go ahead and uh, strain our stock now. As you can see, I've got a strainer in there. This pan here, this pot is a little on the warm side. So pull it out of there and then just pour it right in here, strain it. Ooh, gotta be careful. Don't want to make a mess. now that that's all strained lift it up shake it off let it finish dripping so takes it a minute So that's done. Set that up there. I'm gonna put the lid on it. And I'm gonna let that sit. Meanwhile, I'm going to get ready to cook my rice. Welcome back everybody. So now I'm gonna start my rice process. So in this solo cup or Dixie cup or whatever you wanna call it, I'm gonna take a bottle of water and I'm gonna put it in there. So I'm gonna go pretty much to the top. That's pretty much gonna be the whole bottle. So there is, this is a 16 ounce bottle, almost 17 ounces, which is, if I can remember the math, about two cups. So I'm gonna pour that in all right then i'm gonna get my rice and i'm gonna fill that cup about halfway because i don't have any measuring cups oops i knocked that cup over so now this cup here is about halfway full right so i'm gonna pour that in Tap it and knock any loose ones off. All right, I'm gonna give it a quick little stir here. Now it's all stirred up. And I'm gonna program my Insta thingy here, whatever you wanna call it, fiberware, Instapot, crock pot, to the rice setting. I'm gonna hit the start. Then, I'm going to take the lid, set the lid on it, and do its thing. Make sure the valve is shut so that way it does its thing, and it's going to cook. And when it gets done cooking, I'll bring it back. We'll switch it over. I'll probably just switch it over uh, off camera out of here. That way I can start the next process of making a roux. So when I get ready to start the roux, I will bring it back, and we'll go from there. So we'll see you in a few. All right, welcome back everyone. So now, my rice is all done, I've got it pulled out, so now I'm gonna actually go ahead and start my roux. So I'm gonna program my Instapot thing here to sear and everything. And I'm gonna use a whole stick of butter, which is a quarter cup. So I'm gonna stick a whole stick of butter in here. So I'm gonna start my roux now. So I'll get that all undone, drop it in. Cause you know, butter makes everything better. You know, they say bacon makes everything better. 
but I'll sell this butter. And yeah, I'm making a mess in my truck, but that's all right. I'll clean it here in a little bit. So we're gonna get that melted. Let that start melting down. And uh, once it gets melted, then I've got a quarter cup of flour right here that I'll put in because you want equal amounts of butter and flour to make your roux. And there's different roux that you're gonna be doing, you know. There's a blonde roux which you're gonna use for like bechamels, which is making like a cheese sauce or almost like an Alfredo um, or gravy. So that's your blonde and that's a light color so you're not really cooking your flour that long. Then you're gonna have a, a more of a, almost like a peanut butter color and that's the one that we're going for um, because we don't want it too dark. And then you have a dark roux, which is almost black. It's really dark. And that's more for your like gumbos and uh, stuff like that. So we're just gonna do a blonde roux. And, uh, and I'm sorry, not a blonde roux, but a nutty brew, nutty roux. I can't even talk today. Rain's got me all kinds of messed up. I'm gonna have to cook in the tray inside the truck, which I'd prefer to cook outside because I got more room. But anyway, it is what it is. We'll make do. But, uh, so that's the different kind of roux we're gonna do. We're gonna do a nutty roux and go from there. Um, some people do their vegetables in the butter first uh, and then do the roux or then put the flour in it, but then it don't get as dark in my opinion. Uh, the reason I like to do my roux first is because whenever I put my, my trinity in it, then that pretty much stops the, the browning process of the roux and therefore it doesn't over brown and overcook and burn. So that's why I like to do my roux first. That way I can cool it off with my vegetables when I start cooking the vegetables. So my butter is, is getting melted. It's almost melted now. So now that it's, it's pretty much melted, now I'm gonna put my, my flour in. So you just drop your flour in, you hear it sizzle, and then you start mixing it. You start stirring it around. All right, it's gonna get thick. It's gonna kind of like, almost be like a paste, as you can see in there. It's almost like a paste. You know, I could probably put a little bit more flour in there if I needed to, but I'm not going to, because I kind of like the butter. But you want to keep cooking that. You don't want to stop. You want to keep an eye on it, because if you stop, it's gonna burn. And if you get brown specks and burn it, then it's not no good. So doing this whole process right here takes a little while. You'll smell it here in a little bit. Well, if you could smell through to YouTube, that'd be awesome, but you can't. So I just keep stirring it and let the flour cook. And uh, see, so right now, the way it smells, I got a, a nutty smell. So that tells me that the flour is, is cooked and ready for, say, a, um, uh, like a gravy or a bechamel. You know, this is a little too high, so I'm gonna actually gonna turn it off here. Let it cool. And then I'll turn it back on so that way I can control my heat because I don't want it to cook too fast because I don't want it to burn. So I got it turned off right now. It's going to start cooling off and then I'll turn it back on. It'll come back up to temperature, you know, back and forth. So I want to, I'm just trying to control my temperature because I can't adjust the temperature on this, this uh, Instapot thing. So we'll just keep cooking it like it is. <coughs> you know, like I said, you want to keep scraping the bottoms, scrape the sides, because you don't want it to burn. And uh, at home on the stove, it'd take me about, you know, depending on the stove, anywhere from, you know, usually about 30 minutes to do the a roux to get it the right color. So we're just gonna keep going here and keep mixing it around, keep it cooking. And so, like I said, I didn't put as much flour in there as I should have. Um, I should have put a little more. Like I said, I don't have a measuring cup. I'm just going with what I got. So now I'm gonna turn it back on. So we'll go back down here to menu. Start, fire it back up. So that way it don't cool off too quick or too much. And now it'll heat back up again. And we'll just keep cooking it. As you can see right now, it's more kind of a blonde roux right now. You know, it's all bubbled up right now, but that's more of a blonde roux. And that's for making your gravies, you know, cream gravy or um, uh, bechamel or something like that. You know, like I said, I didn't put enough flour in it. I should have put more flour in it, but oh well.
it is what it is. I'm gonna keep cooking it like it is. It'll work. The other thing too you want to keep in mind about your roux is the darker the roux, the less thickening power it has. So like right now, it will have a pretty good thickening power and you'll make you know a good thick gravy. Where as it gets darker and gets more nutty, uh, nutty color, more peanut color, then your thickening power has reduced considerably. And then the darker it goes, once it gets down to your gumbo color, your darker roux, uh, then it has almost little thickening power whatsoever. It still has a little bit, but not as much. And that's why a lot of people use like phyllo, or I'm not phyllo, but uh, uh, filet powder, uh, which is basically uh, dried sassafras and they grind it up. So that is a filet and why they call it filet gumbo. I don't know if you can see that very well. I'll try to bow my chest out so you can see it a little better. Just keep stirring it. Like I said, you don't want to get, you know, black specks and brown and burn because then it's not going to be any good. So you just keep going until you get to the color you want. I've still got a ways to go. So I'm going to keep cooking this roux and then when it gets close, I'll bring you back. So see you in a few. I don't know how well y'all can see, but y'all can see that the roux now is getting darker. It's almost to the color I want it to be. You know, maybe a little bit longer. But we're right now we're at about mm, 10 minutes in. So I can cook it a little longer. Get a little darker. Main thing is you just keep stirring it. Because like I said, you don't want it to burn. You get black specks in it and stuff like that. Then you know you can change your flavor. You can burn it real quick. So you just keep stirring it. You know, scraping the sides, make sure you get everything. You know, get the bottom real good. And just keep going. And then it will get darker and darker the longer you cook it. So I will keep going. And then when I get the, the desired color I want, I will bring you back and uh, we'll start the next step. So we'll see you in a few. All right. So as you can see, the color now is it's a little bit lighter than peanut butter but that's about as dark as i want to get it for now yeah so now i'm gonna go ahead and start the next process now i can start throwing in my my uh onions and my celery and bell pepper and mix that around so what's going to happen now is that's going to cool that roux down so it's going to stop it from browning any further and so now it's not going to be as it's not going to get any much darker than that so you just keep stirring it you let your your vegetables cook for a bit oh if y'all can smell that man that smells good right now already so I'm going to let that cook for a little bit. You can see how it's already cooled the, the roux down and it's gotten to where it's all covered all the vegetables and everything. So we'll let that keep cooking and those vegetables will get soft and, and get all delicious. And then we'll start adding, a, then I'll add some seasoning into it and uh, add some uh, stock and I don't have diced tomatoes. I typically use diced tomatoes, but I don't have any. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm gonna substitute some tomato sauce instead this time because, well, I don't have any diced tomatoes. So, but it'll still work. So we're gonna let this cook for a little bit. And uh, whenever I get ready to go to the next process, these are here to cook for about 10, 15 minutes probably. And then uh, when I get ready to start the next part, I'll bring you back. So we'll talk to you in a bit. All right, welcome back. I've let this cook for a little bit. My onions are getting translucent and soft, as you can see. So now I'm gonna throw in some seasoning. I've got some, uh, like I said, I'm gonna throw in a little Tony Satris. Not too much right now. I'll taste it later and see. I'm gonna throw in some black pepper. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some red pepper flake. 
because I like mine to have a little heat to it. Not too much. We'll go back and try it again later. I don't add any salt right now because of the fact that uh, Tony Satrice has quite a bit of salt. And so also, since I've added in the seasoning, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the green onion bottoms. All right, so that's in there. Then you mix all that up. Give that a good stir. Let that cook for a few minutes too. Oh, that's smelling so good right now. Mix all that in there real good. Let it cook. All right, so that's been cooking for a little bit. My battery died on my GoPro, so I had to change the batteries out real quick. So that's been cooking for a minute. So now what we're gonna do is I got my, my shrimp stock sitting right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour it in. Get it all in there. All right, so that's all in there. Then give it a stir. Mix it around. That is smelling so good right now. Just let that come back up, come up to a boil. Won't take it long. So, I just stir it up real good. Get everything down in there. Let that cook for a little bit. It'll come up to a boil, you stir it for a little bit, and then I'll cover it and let it cook for about 30 minutes. 30 to 45 minutes, depending on, you know, your stove and everything like that. And then uh, I'll bring it out, then I'll add in my shrimp, and then it will almost be done. So, once this comes up back to a boil, I'm gonna cover it let it cook and then I'll bring it back when I get ready to put the shrimp in. So we'll see you in a bit. All right, welcome back. So as you can see, it's been cooking now for about 30 minutes. You see how it's thickened up and it's looking all good. One thing I forgot to add in it a while ago before I signed off on the other little clip of the little whatever was the tomato. So I put, put it in there real quick while I was off video because I forgot. And I also forgot garlic, so I put garlic in there earlier too. So, but now it's pretty much almost done. Only thing left is to add the shrimp. So I'm getting ready to add the shrimp. I think I got a little too close and the steam kind of fogged it up there. So I'm gonna grab this here shrimp. So I've got the shrimp here. And so all I'm gonna do is open up the bag here. And then slowly drop the shrimp in. Like so. Get the bag over here out the way. And then I'm gonna stir that around. Oh, that's gonna be good. So, we'll stir that around, let that cook for about five minutes because it don't take long for that shrimp to to uh, cook as you can see it's already starting to curl and and cook up pretty good so we'll let that cook there for about five minutes and uh, I'll check back with you here in a few minutes whenever it's getting almost done so talk to you in a minute all right it's all done there it is sauce or a shrimp etouffee. Next time I'll make sauce pecan. Probably do chicken sauce pecan. But now I'm gonna plate it up. And uh, the way I do that is I get a little rice. 
I don't have any bowls, so I'm just having to do what I can. So I get a little rice, put it on my on my little deal right here, and then I scoop me up some some uh, sauce piquant. Scoop up some of that there shrimp and gravy. Put it in that my little thing right here. Try not to drip it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Get some of that delicious gravy in there. got some on my rice I was trying to not to but I did so next I want to put some some green onion on it sprinkle a little green onion around there Oop. I have a little much but hey I like green onion and so there it is all plated up and ready to go good and delicious so I'm going to sit back and enjoy. Well, thanks for joining me on another episode of Road Life and Cooking with Chris. Cooking on the road with Chris. Well, you know, things didn't work out quite the way I wanted them to today because of the rain and the wind. So I ended up having to move everything inside the truck and just cook the best I could inside the truck. Still turned out good. It turned out delicious. But, you know, it was a little, little tougher to do. And so if the video drags out, I'm sorry. But uh, that's what it is. So, you know, if you like what you see, you try it or whatever, or you want me to do something, you know, hit, you know, like, share the video, subscribe, you know, um, help me grow, get better. You know, the better I get, the, the more I'll do and the more I'll post and, you know, hopefully you enjoy it. So, but again, thanks. Uh, for joining me and uh, till the next time enjoy